in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Anoint my everything Use my everything I release my everything You have my everything Take all of me All of me, Lord You have my everything Take all of me All of me, Lord You have my everything Are you praying? have my everything you have my everything you have my everything you have my everything take all of me all of me Lord you have my everything anoint my everything use my everything I release my everything You have my everything Take all of me All of me You have my everything Use all of me All of me You have my everything Prune my everything Rebuild my everything Remake my everything Use my everything Take all of me All of me, Lord You have my everything Take all of me All of me, Lord We're still praying Just a minute to pray Let it be a cry from your heart You came for an encounter tonight tonight you find the people ready to receive we pray tonight that you will find the people yielded ready to receive ready to learn we strip ourselves of every pride we strip ourselves of every vain glory and father we cry that tonight let only one person be seen in this place Jesus even the son of the living God that only one person be exalted in this place jesus even the son of the living god lord we stand and we hide behind the cross and we cry oh god that as your people set their gaze upon this preacher may they see jesus may they see jesus in his power in his wisdom in his grace and to you be all the glory for in Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Please be seated. God bless you. And you may be seated. 
Yesterday, I didn't have um, the opportunity to follow um, Dr. Obwele's session. I wanted to just follow to hear what he was saying so that we just connect from there. But I was in Lagos, so I was able to pick a few things. I think later on, just try to go through it. And I was very, very touched by the perspectives that he brought yesterday. And I just thought it was, it was something that God had put in my heart. And so when he began to talk about these things yesterday, I was very touched. And I thought to just build from there um, because it's important that we understand God's emphasis in these last days. Please lend me your attention. It is important, very, very important very important please bring two people that shout right now very loud under the anointing i just saw a cloud of his glory and for someone the lord is saying he's bringing you into a new prophetic season just help them please help them please whether you're an usher or not you just hold them this is a ministry of the spirit When God does these things, it is because he's responding to the hunger of his people. I want you to be sensitive as we teach. This is why you came. Ay, 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 ay. Glory be to God. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Ay, 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 ay. Glory be to God. Ay, 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 ay. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You see, what happens when you are in the presence of God is that you are immersed in the cloud of his presence. And as you listen, it is more than an information that is coming to you. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. He says, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Then he says, we all. So it's an experience for everyone with faces unveiled beholding him as in a mirror he says we are changed changed we are changed this is what the bible says we are changed ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 1 he says son of man stand upon your feet and i will speak unto you and he had no strength to arise verse 2 says and the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me jesus was speaking and he says the words that i speak unto you it is beyond a lecture is beyond a man just speaking english when you come from the presence you also come with his presence and when you speak he says the words that i speak they are spirit and they are life that means beyond the things that the preacher is saying the essence of his communication from the depth of the spirit there is a spirit to spirit communication while you are listening to me there are things you will hear beyond what i am saying because it's not just your ears hearing it there is a spirit communication there is a spirit communication and so i want you to be very very attentive wherever we stop tonight we'll pray don't be distracted his word is powerful. It comes to build us. Now, God always has his emphasis in every season. Please listen. God is not doing the same thing in all seasons. And there are three levels of the anointing that is available in this side of God's kingdom. The first dimension of the anointing is that which comes 
in the life of a believer by reason of being grafted into Christ. The Bible calls it the anointing that is within. Hallelujah. That is the anointing that is responsible for conformity. The inner workings of the spirit that produces the character of the Christ in the believer. There is the second level of the anointing that comes upon a believer strengthening you to be a witness. Hallelujah. It says, tarry ye in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. But there is a third level of the anointing that does not come just because you are a believer. It does not just come just because you occupy an office. It comes by reason of your understanding and aligning with what God is doing now. So it is possible that you can be a man of God. It is possible you can be a businessman and carry the anointing that is upon a believer by reason of our union with Christ, carry the anointing that is upon you by reason of your office, and yet you will find out that you are very ineffective when you enter a certain season because of the inability to discern and align with what God is doing. It says, and of the sons of Issachar, there were men who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. So in every season, God has his emphasis and there is a threefold emphasis please listen with all due respect if you're a man of god here i want you to hear me if you want to be relevant in the days that are coming your ministry must be pegged around these three things this is what god is doing now number one the first emphasis of the spirit is world evangelization this is what god is doing right now a campaign to see that as many as possible come into the experience of salvation. He desires that all men be saved. He desires that all men be saved. That means whoever becomes part of these global missions, this world evangelization campaign, you can be sure that you have the backing, the support of the spirit. Number two, the second emphasis of the spirit in this season is the maturity of the saints the bible says an heir for as long as that heir is a child he differeth not from a slave even though he be lord of all before now there is a lot of recycling of very inferior levels of light in the church so believers are not methodically mentored to attain stature and maturity in the spirit the average believer is very ignorant as far as the business of spiritual understanding and maturity is concerned so we are around church we do a lot of church activities but most believers are not sound in doctrine they are not grounded the average believer cannot stand in defense of his spiritual understanding what do you know about god what do you know about prayer what do you know about satan what do you know about victory what do you know about defeat what do you know about the realm of the spirit what do you know about god's program what do you know about his economic system what do you know about the cosmos it is this understanding that gives you stature and a standing in life so most believers the average believer just has gaps of spiritual information either learn from church or perhaps following a man of God or some teaching. So we have many disconnected truths that are not synergized to produce stability. One of the things that the Spirit of God is doing, he's rearranging our understanding. He's bringing us to a level of accuracy. There is a formula, and this is what I'm going to be teaching on. There is an apostolic model for the growth of the believer. The believer was never designed to grow by chance. The believer was not supposed to freelance your pathway to growth. There is a predefined pathway. Are we together? We produce doctors today because we invented predictable pathways. So anybody who subscribes to that pathway, at the end of six, seven years, you can call that person a medical doctor, an engineer. You imagine some of the people we celebrate today once upon a time they were naive people with only a passion to become what they are now 
and their ability to have evolved was because they submitted themselves through a methodical system are we together most believers learn just by will by passion if you are fortunate to find it in a conference happy for you if you are fortunate to find it with your pastor happy for you if you're fortunate to find it in a book happy for you if you're fortunate to find it online you stumble across a message and it seems to shed more light and take you out of a level of ignorance happy for you the church cannot be powerful that way there has to be a defined pathway and this is one of the things that i'll be showing us so number one world evangelization number two the maturity of the saints and to achieve this purpose god is not really concerned about the saints he's concerned about the ministerial gifts because they are the ones equipped to prepare the saints nobody will be able to raise a people higher than his realm of spiritual understanding are we together now so rather than god seeking to raise a thousand people he would rather walk upon that one person who he has made a shepherd over the thousand people because in his maturity will be their maturity in his enlightenment will be their enlightenment everyone communicates truth from the lens of his ignorance or otherwise number three what is the third emphasis of the spirit in this season territorial transformation this is an aspect of the great commission that has been neglected for a very long time it is the reason why society has frowned at our christian experience because we've not been able to capture god to a context that has become profitable to society are we together the average christian's experience is laced with all kinds of fanatism without an experience that reflects god to society in matthew chapter 5 when you begin to read from verse 13 jesus said you are the salt of the earth he says, and if the salt has lost its saltiness or its sever, wherewith shall it be salty again? It is good for nothing except to be thrown underfoot, trampled underfoot of men. Then he says, you are the light of the world. He calls us a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. He says, neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but that they put it on a candlestick and it gives light to everyone in the room. He leaves us with a mandate in verse 16. He says, permit your light to so shine before men, not before spirits. There is a dimension of your Christian experience that must reflect on society. So with all due respect, we have a lot of churches, a lot of conferences, a lot of conventions, a lot of crusades, and our society continues to plunge into a level of decadence. You see, because most believers have not been mentored to understand the principles of territorial transformation. The average believer only knows prayer as the tool for territorial transformation. And while that is important and foundational, that is not the only key. There are many aspects. Are we together? Yes. There are people in scripture that the Bible calls they which turn the world upside down. Their territories felt the impact of their godliness. So these are the three emphases of the spirit. World evangelization, the maturity of the saints. God is opening, redigging ancient wells again and bringing us to levels of superior understanding. The things that we were once at a loss about. The things that the fathers, the things that the patriarchs knew that granted them access to power, they manifested unusual possibilities. God, by his spirit, through the spirit of revelation, is bringing these experiences to the church again. You believe that? Shout a loud amen. amen. Hallelujah. So let's go to our discussion tonight. There is an apostolic model for spiritual growth. There is an apostolic model for wholesome growth and stability. It's very important for us to understand. There is a way God designed men to know him. And there is a way God designed men to function. Let me repeat myself again. There is a way God designed that men would know him. There are many ways, many routes in the spirit as far as your determination to know god is concerned but there is a predefined pathway please listen 
the believer is not at liberty to invent his pathway to knowing God. The moment you attempt to invent your way of knowing God, you will dabble into witchcraft, spiritism, and all kinds of extra biblical practices. There are many people who sincerely began a pursuit to knowing God, but they did not know that there is a predefined pathway. The many extra biblical variations that we have in the body of Christ today are a, ref a reflection, it's a report card that if you do not follow the path designed by God as far as knowing him is concerned, even if you are sincere, you will stumble across many, many, many things in the spirit that is not God. Are we together? The Bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the later time some will depart from the faith and will give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons. If you understand anything about seduction, seduction has no power over you until there is a desire in you that it can connect with. Are we together? That means if I am not hungry, the temptation over food will have no power over me. So the character of seduction is that Satan studies your desire and builds a system of deception around your desire. So if your desire is to know God, you can go to fast, you can go to pray, but not understanding that there is a way God designed men to know him. You can sincerely begin that journey and find out that you are encountering familiar spirits encountering all kinds of things you will return back with all kinds of revelations that are not consistent with the character of christ and as you begin to practice those revelations you will find out that you are becoming something else not christ are we learning now so it is important for us to know that the believer is not at liberty to choose how to know god <clears throat> There is already a path. Jeremiah 6, 16. Give it to us, please. The Bible says, Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old path. Where is the good way? He says, and walk therein and ye shall find rest for your souls. There is a path already predefined. Predefined by God. And tonight I want to show you that path. In the name of Jesus Christ. When Jesus called the disciples who would later become apostles of the Lamb, he subjected them to a model, a template. There was a way he raised them. There was a way he made them to evolve from fishermen to apostles. They did not just become apostles just because they exhausted their time with Jesus. They were submitted methodically to a spiritual system. The early church from Acts chapter 2 began to evolve and grow until they had mighty men within the church community by following the same pathway. And I submit to you by the integrity of scripture that any person, any church, any environment, any territory that goes back to that apostolic template must become a people of power, must become a people of grace. If that is you, shout a loud amen. So number one, there is a way God designed men to know him. There is a way God designed men to function. The second thought that I wanted to have tonight is that there is a model, there is a template that the early church used in building believers. There is a model, there is a template that the early church used in building believers. It would be such a risk for Jesus to leave them to their creativity. Choose how to raise the people. No. They were given an exact blueprint and they used it to the latter and they raised mighty men out of sinners if this model is followed the truth is that it will turn anyone to an object of wonder the idea that god just decided to select a few people and manifest his glory and power in their life is not scriptural it is true that there are people by reason of the election of grace are we together have been apportioned certain superior dimensions in the spirit for the sake of God's program. But I want you to know, and this is the next point, that the believer has a destiny in Christ. Please follow my teaching carefully. Are we together? If we're together, say amen. I need to know that everyone is following. 
there is a destiny that the believer has in Christ. And I want to reveal it to you. The believer's destiny in Christ, listen to me, the end product of all that God is doing in and through you is glory. The end product, I need to tell you this, when you begin to walk with God, the end product, what God has in mind, by the time he begins to walk with any man, is that his glory be manifested through that person. Are we together? God's ultimate desire for every believer, as far as your prophetic destiny is concerned, is that eventually your life becomes a manifestation of the glory of God. Write that statement down. That your life, this is, this is your creed. This is the destination, your faith adventure. Why the prayer? Why the fasting? Why the word study? Why going to church on Sunday? I'm revealing to you that behind every spiritual activity, this is what God has at the back of his mind. That my life and your life becomes in experience a manifestation of the glory of God. Say my life. Please shout it. Say my life must become a manifestation of the glory of God. One more time, say my life must become a manifestation of the glory of God. You know what the glory of God is? The word glory comes from the Hebrew word kabod. The Greek is doxa. It means the weightiness is an attempt to measure the value of a thing. So when you talk about the glory of a thing, you have to examine all the features that makes that thing expensive or makes that thing desirable. Are we together now? Yes. If I hold your phone right now, if you are using a latest phone, and I say, what is the glory of this phone? You have to tell me all the features that make that phone expensive or makes it unique. So when the Bible says the believer should be the manifestation of the glory of God, it means the believer becomes a script, an explanation to how mighty God is. Are we together now? Men do not know God because they do not have the spirit of God in them. So you become a living epistle that when you walk with God, eventually you begin to become a kind of believer that becomes the most visible expression of all the multifaceted dimensions that make God God. His favor, his wisdom, his power, his grace. All of these attributes of God begin to find expression through you and it will cost the nations to acknowledge him as lord this is the destiny of every believer if you do not understand this you cannot raise people if you do not understand this you will produce a weak people man of god behind the pulpits that you stand in every sunday every wednesday behind every conference such as this it's important for us to know that we are in partnership with god over this agenda to be able to bring the saints into their prophetic destiny. That no matter where you meet them from, you should never leave them that way. God's desire is more than making you rich. That's too small an agenda. God's desire is more than just giving you a job. It's important, but it's too small an agenda. These things are called his benefits. There are six of them, according to Psalm 102. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. He says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. But don't get so distracted with the benefits that you forget your destiny. The destiny of every believer. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Whether you are a man of God, whether you are in business, this revelation changed my life as an individual and as a man of God. Behind my raising people by the spirit, behind the things that I do, at the back of my mind is that I am in partnership with God to produce this agenda. That to birth the glory of God in the saints. Are we together? Very, very important. Your prophetic destiny in Christ. The Bible says in Romans 8 and verse 18. It says, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. There is a glory to be revealed in us. There is a glory to be revealed in us. In fact, the Bible says, 
um how does he put it now it says for our light afflictions which is but for a moment it walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory there is a weight of glory the manifestation of the power of god john 15 and verse 8 herein is my father glorified when you bear much fruit so shall you be my disciples john 15 16 you have not chosen me but i have chosen you it says and ordained you to go and bear fruit and that your fruit will remain galatians 1 24 profound sentence and they glorified god in me god can be glorified in a man god can be glorified through a man are we together now yes when jesus walked upon the earth he walked as a revelation of who god was and who god is the invisible god that we never saw that we did not know now had a material frame was revealed to us in the person jesus so all our suspicions and fears and doubts about god were clarified when jesus walked upon the earth he was a manifestation of the invisible god and just like jesus the saints have been given the mandate to follow in his steps that means we are to our world today a revelation of the invisible god the god they cannot see hallelujah are we learning now say my destiny in christ please shout it say my destiny in christ is to be a manifestation of the glory of god on earth this is profound it will change your life immediately you know that beyond being a doctor beyond being an engineer beyond being a preacher beyond being whatever career whatever it is a family person that ultimately bigger than all of those things all those desires are subsets of this my life must become a glory a revelation of the glory of god that means one day someone should look at your life and say god i fear you this is what you can make out of men one day someone should look at your life and say indeed i know that there is a god in heaven do you believe this the believer has a destiny in christ and the destiny is that your life becomes a manifestation of the glory of god the second thing that i want to tell you is that there is a pathway that leads to this expectation in as much as it is god's desire that we become visible manifestations of his glory there is a pathway that leads to that experience there is a pathway that leads to that experience my god there is a pathway that leads to that experience in john chapter 14 and verse 6 jesus made a very profound statement he now said i am the way everyone say the way i am the way not i have the way not i will show you the way he says i am the way and the truth and the life when you really understand that statement he was not talking about three different things he was talking about a pathway i am the way that leads you to truth reality and at the end of that journey you encounter life hallelujah praise the name of the lord so there is a pathway that leads to that and it's important that you understand this pathway let me have three gentlemen please any three gentlemen just come up let me use you for an example any ones at all in front come we have three that's all right my friend you can go back huh just these three gentlemen do we have one more okay you stand here you stand here and you stand here just space yourselves watch this now where is our third person come you be the starting point you can go up let him stand where you are i like to teach giving an illustration now everybody watch please turn just face this way yes watch this there are three levels you need to understand this three major levels to the believers experience number one this for instance is a sinner who does not even know god he's never met god he just came for a conference like this or he came to your church as a man of god 
But the destiny of that believer is to become like this person. If you do not understand the three phases that produces the glory of God out of a believer, you will keep teaching and teaching and teaching and people will never change. The first level is called salvation. Don't assume you understand what I'm saying. You just believe this. If you try to follow the path to the glory of God and you jump salvation, you will never get there. Hallelujah. As simple as this sounds, there are many, many believers. Give us 1 John chapter 5, please. 11 and 12. Salvation. So here is a gentleman who, say, perhaps came to church and then a great man of God, after preaching, made an altar call. This gentleman, perhaps naive in the things of the spirit. Are we together now? But he made that call and he came. Jesus, be my savior. Be my Lord. Now he just began the journey. Jesus is called the key to the kingdom. There is only one key to the kingdom. It's not a metallic object. It's not a principle. It's not a law. It's a person. Jesus. But when you get into the kingdom, then there are the keys of the kingdom. Are we together? There is only one key to the kingdom. Jesus said, I am the door. So this gentleman gets saved. Now watch what happens. The moment this gentleman gets saved, for many believers, they think that is all. The average believer thinks his destiny is just to be saved. No, being saved is only entrance into the kingdom experience. Are we together? It was never supposed to stop at the initial salvation experience. Because at this point, there's a lot that is not yet at work in his life. So, when this gentleman gets saved, watch this. He does not just stay in that state. A transition begins. The second phase after salvation is called transformation. Transformation. You need to know this for yourself and then to be able to produce a qualitative believer within your territory. It's unfortunate that many times we leave many believers barely saved. I hope you know that every sinner according to scripture is called a harvest so in the mind of god every sinner is already ripe for a harvest what do you do when you harvest crops do you leave them in the farm there when you harvest a tomato especially perishables if you harvest tomato and leaves it in the farm what begins to happen this is what happens so when you have a church full of people that are just saved and are not changed they will fill the church and eventually all kinds of troubles, manifestations of carnality begins to happen. Because they are only saved. Transformation has not happened. Transformation is the name given to the process that makes you become like Christ in experience. Transformation. The name given to the process that makes you become like Christ in experience. Is someone following? This is very important. You may have heard me say the greatest need of an unbeliever is salvation. Every time you see an unbeliever around Asaba, every time you see an unbeliever around your area, no matter what you give the person, whether it's pocket money, whether it's a job, from an eternal perspective, the greatest need of an unbeliever is salvation. Are we together? So if you give that person a job, if that person receives a healing miracle, if that person receives lifting, all of those things are just, um, they are just consolations. But you have really helped an unbeliever when you bring him to a point of accepting the Lordship of Jesus. Now, the greatest need of a believer that is saved is transformation. Are we together now? Transformation. 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 The process that makes you to become like Christ in experience. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 19. Please give it to us. I need to walk you through this path. My little children, Paul says, of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. He's speaking to believers, people who are already saved. But he's saying there is a formation of Christ that needs to happen. The inner workings of the spirit. This is what produces the fruit of the spirit. Like you heard Dr. Ogwele was saying yesterday, the fruit of the spirit 
is not something that is mechanical. You don't try to have it. A fruit is a natural byproduct of the maturity of a tree. Are we together? When a tree grows well and it becomes matured, it does not struggle to produce fruit. Transformation and conformity. So this gentleman came to church, but he came from a background of idolatry with all kinds of lusts and all kinds of anger, all kinds of jealousy, all kinds of things. But he saved truly. He gave his life to Christ. And then through the ministry of the teaching priest, according to Jeremiah 3.15, and I will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart, and they will feed you, he says, with knowledge and with understanding. This is the raw material that turns this naive believer into a transformed believer. Knowledge and understanding. The bridge between immaturity and to become a person of stature is knowledge, understanding. Is someone learning now? So with time, this our brother who started as a naive unbeliever full of all kinds of baggages, there is the work of the spirit. Every Sunday, every Wednesday, every message, every prayer session, every fasting session, every discipleship session is transiting this gentleman gradually. Eventually, he will become what we call a transformed believer. A transformed believer. What is the difference between this man and this man? There is a greater experience of the character of Christ. When you look at this gentleman, there is a striking difference. You will almost not know again whether he's Igbo or Yoruba or Hausa or e European or American. Do you know why? Because the limitations connected to his territory by reason of natural different descent has been eroded. He's been brought into a new culture. The only person he looks like now is Christ. The limitations that came with where he's coming from, the anger problems, the whatever it is, has been cut away. The old man has been deadened. He's been alive unto Christ. Are we learning? But you see, when this gentleman gets here, now he's learned the rudiments of the things of God. Then God lets him know that I have an assignment for you. And that this assignment is not just for you to be a church member. This assignment is for you to be a witness. Now that you have experienced me, you need to help the world know who I am because your destiny is to be a manifestation of my glory. But for that to happen, if you only go with stories, they will drive you away. And so you move to the next level called empowerment. Are you seeing the order now? So salvation, then transformation. If you try to do an empowerment for this man, you are only going to waste anointing and waste time and this is a mistake that is made in church people receiving gifts without the character of christ and you see all the kinds of trouble that keep coming out of this because we compromise on the pathway look at the ratio of impartation to transformation three and a half years to one day of pentecost the, the disciples kept crying and said jesus wouldn't the anointing come on us we want to walk signs and wonders and he said no stay I'm making you to become a certain kind of people. They were only anointing conscious. They wanted anointing. When they saw Jesus healing the sick, they said, what manner of man is this? That the winds and the waves obey him. Give us this power too. And he said, no, not that way. You continue. At a point, they became angry. They said, listen, we've left everything to follow you. This bargain is not, we thought you would just give us anointing. And that mistake still happens in church today. There are people who the moment they get, they get saved. They run around with bottles of oil. They run around harassing men, holding their trousers. I will not let you go. You need to understand that the value of empowerment is when it comes upon a transformed vessel. Because the oil will always assume the shape of the vessel carrying it. When the vessel was small, it made the oil look small. What was multiplied was not really the oil. The moment the, the vessel expanded, the full potential of the oil was revealed. So there are some of you right now, 
God is doing a work. You are in this phase of your Christian experience. And while that is happening, the devil is deceiving you. That the anointing will never come upon your life. You are what kind of man of God are you? By now you should have opened a church. By now you would have become a great man of God. No. The level of stamina it takes to represent God will be gotten in this your phase of transformation. But then when you are truly transformed, the next phase is empowerment. Empowerment. When Jesus walked with the disciples, they got to a point where he told them, now you've understood the message. You need empowerment. Tarry ye in Jerusalem. Don't just carry stories around. You need to be able to be validators, to be witnesses. Are we learning now? Any believer who follows these three phases will eventually become a mighty manifestation of the power of God. But the most important aspect, notice, this one, salvation happens instantly. Are we learning? Empowerment happens instantly. The one that is not instant is transformation. And that is the hardest of the process. Let me take it again. Salvation happens instantly. You declare the Lordship of Jesus in that moment. Whether you feel like it or not, you are saved. When the power of God came upon Elisha, in that moment, he began to work miracles. But ladies and gentlemen, the hardest journey of the believer is the journey from salvation to complete his process of transformation. In truth, we don't finish, but that you attain a threshold that can leave you empowered. Let me tell you what is happening in church. We are shifting this equation and changing it. There are some, hold my hands my friend. This is empowerment. Some of us, this is the equation we arranged. So people who do not even know Jesus, just because there is an impartation. I want power. I want anointing. To what end? The men in Athens were bowing down and worshipping an unknown God. Is that in your Bible? An unknown God. They were worshipping an unknown God. And when Paul came, he saw them and said, Ah, I perceive that you people have a lot of zeal. But all this worship and this service and this devotion, do you know the God that you are serving? Jesus told the woman at the well, He said, Ye worship what ye know not, but we worship what we know, for salvation is of the Jews. Tonight for someone, God is rearranging it. That just because the anointing has not come on your life does not mean you are following the wrong path. You don't start with transformation. No. You start with salvation. There are many people who have jumped that step. They started with transformation. They have never truly been saved. But they've been around a church listening to a man of God. And so they have a semblance of decorum in their lives. And you will be mistaken that they are saved. They are not saved. The Bible says, For God so loved the world, John 3, 16. It says that he gave his then one and only begotten son, that whosoever, that blessing is for whosoever, believes in him, not whosoever comes around him, whosoever believeth on him, should not perish, it says, but have life everlasting. Verse 17 says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. First John chapter 5. Let's read 11 and 12. First John chapter 5. Please give it to us. And this is the record. Asaba, are we together? That God had given us eternal life. And this life is so structured that you must encounter his son. Verse 12. It says, So that he that had the son is the only one who had life and he that had not the son does not have his life remember what i'm teaching you that the believer's destiny is to be a manifestation of the glory of god and that to achieve that there are three major phases watch this the first phase is when you acknowledge the lordship of christ the gift that you receive here is the righteousness of god you do not earn it it is something that comes as a gift. The life of God as a gift. Watch this. We are not saved by good works. We are saved by grace. But we are saved unto good works. You see that now. 
there is nobody who can end salvation for our righteousness is as filthy rags it is important that as we help believers we do not just start telling them oh you, you don't pray and fast to be saved you don't study the bible to be saved no you believe in jesus to be saved when you are now saved there are many things that happen to you when you are saved that were not in you when you were not saved for instance the anointing that is within that comes by the spirit that is the anointing that makes you alive desiring you desiring god placing the love of jesus in your heart now that you have that measure of grace are, are you seeing that now the teaching priest in partnership with the word of god now leads you to a point of salvation of transformation you now begin to submit yourself to transformation and as you are transformed eventually you will find out that you are becoming a certain kind of mysterious believer and then a moment will come you will encounter the power of the holy ghost at that point you have become a living epistle god can show you to your world and you become a sign and a wonder and men look at you and marvel and say what kind of preacher are you what kind of businessman are you and if the person is interested you can pass the person through the same face are you seeing that it's not an exclusive reserve for some preachers everyone who passes through this face salvation transformation empowerment salvation transformation empowerment that is the apostolic model that was used by jesus to train the disciples and that was a model that they used to raise mighty men from the early church salvation transformation empowerment the greatest need of an unbeliever ladies and gentlemen every unbeliever in asaba no matter what you do to them if you do not bring them to the saving knowledge of jesus you really did not help them the greatest need of a saved believer is not to remain a baby but by the ministry of the teaching priest by the ministry of the word by the ministry of the spirit in partnership with all the spiritual exercises of fellowship and prayer according to acts chapter 2 and verse 42 and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and in fellowship in breaking of bread and in prayer that was a model acts chapter 6 and verse 4 but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word now that person is sub submits to this process of transformation and then when you are transformed you can now begin to experience measures of god's power and even that empowerment does not just come it is not all the anointing you need in your life that comes at once it comes in measures according to ezekiel 47 it comes in measures and that measure is controlled by number one the predeterminate counsel of god number two your level of faithfulness in using that which he has given you and number three your yieldedness to receive more these are the factors that govern the multiplication of the anointing i'm saying that because in the name of jesus there is someone who came for this conference you may have started just with salvation but the spirit of god has taken you through transformation to a measure and now you came for this conference because there is such an anointing there is a mighty grace that is going to rest upon you and it will turn you to become a sign and a wonder there are pastors that are transformed sincerely the missing ingredient in your ministry is empowerment just because oil came on your head does not mean you are anointed oil does not anoint the oil has to be anointed itself to anoint god does not hide his power in oil or mediums his power is hidden in his word his power is hidden in men it is men that anoint the mediums to be points of contact are we together let's celebrate this gentleman god bless you please if we're together say amen. amen i want you whilst you are seated to lay your hands on your head and now begin to cry unto god in one minute before we continue father i desire you know what face you are in right now for some you are not even saved i'll be giving you an opportunity before the service is done for some you are saved but the truth is that there is there is bankruptcy of grace of growth you have been around the things of church 
but not around the things of God. There is a cry for transformation. Go ahead and pray. And there are others in all fairness. You have tasted of the transforming power of the spirit, but your witness is not effective because you need to be empowered. You need to be empowered. You have tarried in this conference because the anointing for your destiny has been looking for you. Oh, and may it find you tonight. May it find you tonight. May it find you. That anointing that makes you a prophet indeed. That anointing that makes you an apostle indeed. That anointing that makes you a businessman indeed. May it find you. May it find you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now. Yesterday I understand Dr. Ogwele began to talk to you about the knowledge of God and he shared a few things and I just want to add a few things and then we'll pray. It is important to know, listen carefully, I wrote here, the riches and the full potential of the life of God is released only when we know God. The riches and the full potential of the life of God is only released when we know God. That means this Zoe life, when the believer receives this life, watch this now. The life of God is a compendium of limitless possibilities. But that the potentials in that life that you have received... Is only released to your wall to the degree to which you know God. Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32. The B part says, but the people that do know their God. Two things will happen to them. Number one, capacity. They shall be strong. Number two, they shall do exploits. Not talk exploits. Not wish exploits. Not explain exploits. Not just write books about exploits. They shall do do exploits hallelujah john 17 and verse 3 jesus is praying now and he says and this is life eternal that they may know thee the only true god are you seeing that now that the administration of eternal life is beyond just confessing jesus christ that opens you up to the potential of that life but the experience of eternal life is a product of knowledge that the deeper your knowledge of God, the more the reality of this life you have received is made manifest through you. You believe that? Say amen. amen. This is life eternal, that they may know thee the only true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent. In fact, the Bible says, according as his divine power, it says grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge, not of it, the knowledge of him. So grace and peace is multiplied to the degree to which you know him. You know him. The more you know him, the more you see grace. The more you see peace. The more you know him, the more you see grace. That means the difference between any two believers is not the love of God. It's the depth of their knowledge of God that has translated to the power that they command in their world. Did you get that now? Someone can tell the sick be healed you can speak over someone's destiny let doors be open and you find out that nothing happens it's not that you are fake it's just that you do not know God enough to have drawn the kind of strength required to produce that are we together there is a reward for every encounter with God it's like money if I have 10,000 can I buy a house no but do I have money yes but not enough for that kind of possibility. So if I stand to buy a house and I bring out 10,000, the owner of the house or whoever is selling it will say, this is too small. There are many of us, it's not like you are not anointed, but the capacity of God you need to make you reveal him to your world, you don't have it yet. So you stand before cases that are higher than your knowledge of God. And you say in the name of Jesus, let your destiny be open. And destiny is not open. Because every time you know God, there is a weight you carry in the spirit. And the realm of the spirit acknowledges it. He said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know.
this is what differentiates men in the spirit the depth of their knowledge of God but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded he says is someone learning now this is the difference between any two preachers believe me this is the difference between any two kingdom businessmen the depth of their knowledge of God there is someone who can find something about God the patriarchs finds found something about God and it brought them they were not even praying for power when Moses watch this when Moses had an encounter with the glory of God he never prayed that his face would shine he never prayed for certain levels of wisdom it was a byproduct it is impossible to meet and know the God of the Bible and then remain the same hello beloved in Christ we hope this message was a blessing to you I would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and then if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain 